Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. In today's video lesson, we're going to be taking a look at inner VLAN routing and how to configure it on both a Cisco router and a Cisco switch. Now, this is a very important topic when you're studying for your CCNA, whether you're doing the composite exam or you're studying for the ICND2 exam. Understanding this concept, very important for the tests and also very important in the real world um, when you get out there configuring real Cisco routers and switches. Now before we get into the configuration let's just talk a little bit about VLANs, uh, what they are, why we need inner VLAN routing. So what is a VLAN? Well a VLAN or a virtual local area network is a way that we can take a switch or we can take a series of switches and we can take all those ports on those switches and we can logically segment them into various different subnetworks or different logical entities. So a lot of times in an enterprise network you'll see this done uh, based on what type of traffic is on each individual network. So for instance you might have a VLAN 10 for data, you might have VLAN 20 for voice, you might have VLAN 30 for wireless, so on and so forth and each individual segment is its own separate independent network okay now when we're dealing with VLANs typically what you see is there's gonna be one layer three subnet or one logical network per VLAN so in our case here we've got VLAN 10 on the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 we've got VLAN 20 on the 10 10 20 VLAN 30 and the 10 10 30. So that's basically what a VLAN is. In this case we only have one switch. Now if you remember back to your ICND1 studies or the beginning of uh, the CCNA fundamentals, remember that we can have all these VLANs on the switch, okay, but a switch, at least the kind you're dealing with for the CCNA exam, doesn't route packets, right? It only switches packets. So if I have three different networks here, and I want to get from VLAN 10 to, say, VLAN 20, what has to happen for traffic to go from one network to another? Well, that's where we have the functionality of a router, right? So in this case, we're going to use a router, router 1 up there, to route between these three different VLANs. Now, sometimes you hear this particular topology referred to as router on a stick, because really what needs to happen is if I'm on say VLAN 10 and I want to get to 20 traffic's going to go into cat 1 it's got to go up that link to router 1 where router 1 will then route it and then it's going to come right back out the same link down to the switch to VLAN 20 so that's a little bit why a little bit about why they call it VLAN on a stick now let's take a look at the uh, the topology here now if you think about it okay if I've got cat 1 and I've got these three VLANs defined and I need to route between those VLANs basically logically what you would have to have is you'd have to have three ports on your switch connected up to three different interfaces on your router right you would have an interface on your router in each one in each VLAN so you might have like fast 00 on router 1 with an IP of 10.10.10.1 and that might be connected to port 1 on your switch and that port would be in VLAN 10. Then you might have FAST01 connected to another port on your switch which would be in VLAN 20. You might have FAST02 connected to another port which might be in VLAN 30. So really logically you're going to need three separate interfaces on your router, three separate interfaces on your switch to do what we want to do here. Well that's not very efficient there's a better way we can do it where basically what we're going to do we're going to use the same physical interface on the router and on the switch and what we're going to do is on the router we're going to create three sub interfaces and we're going to tell those sub interfaces what VLAN they're going to be in by tagging it and we're going to send all three of those VLANs over a trunk link to the switch so instead of having three actual physical interfaces we have one physical interface but three logical links. So let's jump right into the configuration here. We're going to start on the switch. 
right from the ground up. So the first thing we're going to do, let's pop over to Cat1. We're going to go ahead and start creating our VLANs. So I'm going to go to Configure Terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and create our VLANs. So I'm going to say VLAN 10. We'll say name is the data VLAN. VLAN 20, we'll call that voice. VLAN 30, we'll say that's wireless. Exit out of that prompt. Now let's make sure that our VLANs did indeed get added. So let's do a show VLAN brief. And we'll see right here, we did add our VLANs. Now let's go ahead and assign our VLANs to the correct ports. So I'm going to say interface range, fast 0, 2 through 16. We're going to put all those ports in VLAN 10. So I'm going to say switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 10. Description will be data, VLAN. Now we're going to say interface range fast 0, 17 through 32. Switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 20. Description, voice VLAN. Now interface range, fast 0, 33 through 48. Same thing. Misspelled that there. And I'm going to say switch port access, VLAN 30. Description. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add, say, description, wireless VLAN. So we've added our ports. Now we're going to go ahead and configure our trunk link up to the router. So that's going to be port 1, interface fast 01. We're going to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1Q. It's going to set our trunking protocol. Then I'm going to say switch port mode trunk to tell it to trunk unconditionally. Now let's say no shutdown on that link. Now we haven't turned it up on the router end yet, so you're going to notice that it's still down down. Now let's run over to the router. And what we're going to do here, let's go ahead and create our sub interfaces. Right now you can see there's basically nothing going on here. So we're going to say interface fast 00, zero no IP address, no shutdown. And now what we're going to do is create our three sub interfaces to trunk down to the router. So we're going to say fast 00, zero dot 10. Now that dot 10, that can be any number you want. Typically people assign it to the VLAN number just to make it easy. Now we have to tell it what VLAN is it going to tag traffic as. So we're going to say encapsulation dot 1Q VLAN 10. IP address 10.10.10. Let's say dot 1. Now we're going to do our second one. Fast 00, zero dot 20. And give it an IP in VLAN 20. And finally, VLAN 30. Oops, 30. 10.10.30.1. Now let's take a look at show IP interface brief to make sure all of our interfaces came up. We do see right here, all three of our links came up up. Let's go back to the switch for a second and let's do a little verification. We're gonna say show interface, oops, show interface trunk. And we can see that port one is trunking, 8021Q, and it's passing all of our different VLANs up. So things are looking good. Let's do a quick show command back on the router. We're going to say show IP route. And what you're going to see here is a directly connected route for all three of our interfaces. Exactly what we want. So let's jump back to 
the picture here for a second. What we're going to do is we're going to configure a quick test. So we're going to throw a couple routers here. We're going to throw router 2, router 4, and router 5, each one in a different VLAN. So router 2 will be in VLAN 10, router 4 in VLAN 20, and router 5 in VLAN 30. And we're going to see if we can route between them. So we're going to jump over to router 2. It's going to be a very simple config. Since we're not really using it as a router, it's basically going to be a host. I'm going to say no IP routing. I'm going to say IP default gateway 10.10.10.1. And I'm going to give it an IP address 10.10.10.2. And no shut that interface. Over on router 4, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to give him a default gateway in VLAN 20 and configure his interface 20.4 and bring that one up and then router 5 we're going to say 10.10.30.5 bring that up and I need to add IP default gateway 10.10.30.1 okay now we need to change some VLANs here because those interfaces are on ports that we already put into VLAN 10 so router 2 is on port 2 that already is in VLAN 10 so let's go to port 4 that's router 4 switch port access VLAN 20 and router 5 switch port access VLAN 30 now let's run back to we're gonna go over to router 2 so we can see that we have an IP we're in VLAN 20 now we're gonna try to route over to the other routers so let's say ping 10.10.20.4 that's router 4 and there it goes finally and notice that timed out the first few times that's normal because it has to go through the ARP process but after it happens once you can see it works just fine now we'll ping over to router 5 in VLAN 30 we're gonna see a similar process happen here where we're looking for that ARP actually looks like we have a problem there Let's run back over to router 5 for a second. So we do have... Oh, there's our problem right there. Let's fix that. 10.10.30.5 And now we'll run back to router 2, and we'll try that ping again. There we go. Now we have success. So basically, if we take a look back at the diagram, what happened when router 2 needed to ping those, it went in, it went up to, the, to router 1, router 1 routed the packet from the incoming VLAN to the outgoing VLAN, sent it back down that other sub interface and then it hit either router 4 or router 5 so that's basically inner VLAN routing and how to configure it um, until next time guys keep studying hard you can also follow me on twitter at jasterino or check out my blog at asterinonetworks.com thanks for watching the video today guys and I'll talk to you all soon